Hey everybody, it's May 29th, 2013, if you can believe that. My name is Dan Bull. I'm president of 65 Amps, coming to you from my office in Los Angeles, California, where we're making lots of amplifiers. Uh, this show is called Lunch with Dan Bull, and the weird part is I never eat lunch, because I'm hungry. So it's really just what's on my mind, is lunch. Um, for those of you watching the recording, there's a large chat window here that I'm responding to and I'll be reading most of the time, not looking into the camera as I should. Um, and I'm trying to speak in complete sentences while reading a dozen questions at the same time. So forgive me if I seem a bit scattered. Uh, if you are watching the recording, I highly encourage you to come hang out with us. We're on every Wednesday at noon Pacific time, which is GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, minus eight for those of you outside the United States on other continents. We usually have people from three or four different continents and seven or eight countries here. And we talk about amplifiers. I'd like to play guitar on the show, but for some reason I've been lax about getting my rig put together at the new joint. Uh, so we've been having a chat show for a few months now that kind of works out well. Um, we talk about anything guitar related, amps, tubes, pedals, cables, music business, all those sorts of things. Uh, today I want to try to talk about a few things. What's going on at 65? Uh, literally why Justin Bieber is an asshole. Because uh, I have some inside information on that that I want to share. Uh, Bieber. Um, Lucy. And um, what else is going on? I got some good questions. We do a pre-show chat in here if you want to log in early. Um, I had some good questions people wanted me to, to answer along the lines of how to blow up an amp. I can definitely tell you how to do that. Um, best 6L6. Uh, we're going to um, try to get Miles Rose on speakerphone here um, to talk about tubes here shortly because we had a lot of tube questions. Uh, one good question I really liked was, the Ventura has an American sound but uses a British topology. So I'll go through that. Uh, I had a nice hang with Earl Slick this week. I'll tell you guys all about that, which is very fun. And, um, uh, and then what's the relationship between a preamp and the power amp in an amplifier? So uh, we have Canadians on here already apologizing for Bieber. I don't blame Bieber, to be honest with you. I'm, we can talk about that. I think Bieber is going down a Michael Jackson path. Pretty soon he's going to start doing drugs and be crazy. And the questions are coming in already. The Biebs. What did the Biebs do now? Ah, poor little kid. Um... Hey, Josh. Hey, you went right for the kill there, didn't you? Josh said he's going to start molesting children. I certainly hope not. Of course, he'd be molesting himself. Um, let's see. Miles is texting here. He's getting kind of soaked up. Um, I'm going to wave him off. Sorry, guys. All right, we'll get Miles next time. So, uh, Jesus Juice. He is a child. Yeah, how does he molest himself? So... Maybe we should just get the Bieber stuff out of the way since we went there. And um, then we'll move forward with topics of substance because Bieber is definitely not a topic of substance. So without naming names, I got a friend of mine who um, lives out there. Wow, I got some rooster tail going on here. Sorry. Josh, don't make fun of me. I just can't have bad hair. You know what I'm saying? Um 
Come on, it's too easy. Um, Christopher, I'll look on the 60. Well, let's look at this tube here really quick. Maybe I can do both. Um, da -da open in a new tab. 65 amps. Do -do -do. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Come on. I don't see it. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I don't see it there, Mr. Bot. Stratocaster Mojo. Okay. Yeah, I have a little bit of hair. Justin Bieber. So um, a friend of mine lives out there close to where Bieber is, and there's a deli or whatever. So I heard the whole story. Um... I heard the whole story uh, from a friend of mine who actually talked to Keyshawn Johnson. So if you hadn't heard, like, apparently Bieber buys these European supercars. And he lives in this big gated community. So he's such an incredible... All right, cuss words. This is caveat. Cuss words are going to happen right now. If you're offended by cuss words, turn the volume down. Because I'm going to cuss. Are we all okay with that? Can I get an amen? Can I get a yes? Can I get a roger? Can I get a check? We're all okay with cuss words. Is everybody okay with cuss words? Trust me, they will be used in the proper context. Okay, good. I don't want to offend anybody. I have no problem with cuss words. But I know a lot of people do. And I respect that. So I disagree with you, but I respect it. They're just words. Murder, rape, those words are it obscene saying shit fuck it's just words okay so Bieber is such an incredible pussy <laughs> that he buys these Italian supercars but he only he just zooms them around his neighborhood and um, <clears throat> he's too afraid to go out and open them up on the freeway or in the mountain roads. And there's lots. of Shice Kolf, exactly. Um, but, he, you know, in L.A., there's lots of great canyon and mountain roads to open up your 12-cylinder Italian car. But he's such an incredible little pussy that he won't do that. So what he does is he, he lives in this huge gated community. So he, he zooms around the streets where people have kids playing and all that kind of stuff. So Keyshawn Johnson, for those of you in Europe, Keyshawn Johnson is a very popular football player here. Very large man. Very nice man as well. Keyshawn was um, driving his kids somewhere, I don't know where, in the neighborhood. And Bieber zoomed him. And Keyshawn's like 6'6", 275 pounds. And um, Keyshawn's driving his kids in a Prius, right? And Bieber goes by him at like 100 miles an hour in the neighborhood uh, in a Ferrari. Keyshawn, a little upset. This has happened a bunch of times to everyone in the neighborhood. So Keyshawn drops his kids off at the house, turns around, starts driving around the neighborhood to find Bieber. Bieber notices that Keyshawn's following him, so he, he, he drives home. Keyshawn's right behind him. Keyshawn gets out of the car, starts to confront him about this ridiculously stupid, dangerous driving that he's doing in the neighborhood because there's kids everywhere. Bieber's such an incredible pussy, again, that he runs in the house. He runs away. He won't even talk to Keyshawn. And he hides. He won't come out. Keyshawn's trying to get him out of the house. He won't come out. So I guess they had to call the cops or something. I don't know. But, um, so it's pussy upon pussy upon pussy. He gets these cars. He's too afraid to drive them out on real streets. Pussy. 
So what does he do? He drives them inside his gated community on streets where kids are playing. Pussy. One of his neighbors tries to talk to him about it. He runs in the house and locks himself in. Pussy. Bieber, why? Don't even get me talking about this speech he gave at some award show last week. Hey, I'm 19 and I'm trying really hard. Why you don't have to boo me? You know what, dude? If you had one sense of modesty, people wouldn't boo you. The problem isn't that you're 19 and you sing really bubblegum songs and you look like a 12-year-old girl. That's all fine. You know what? You're just how God made you. That's fine. You look like a 12-year-old girl. That's it. You are a 12-year-old girl. But that's not the problem. It's the fact that you, you think that you're important. You think that you're a huge part of the music business. Um... It's called modesty. Modesty, Justin. I know you never watch this show, but just in case someone forwards you the link. Modesty, little brother. If you could take yourself lightly, people would like you a lot more. I know you're a talented kid. I know you have skill. I know you have, to, it's very obvious you have talent, you have skill. <laughs> little sister, that's right, Rob. Don't be, don't be like that. Just grow the fuck up, would you? Okay. All right, we got Bieber out of the way. No one cares, man. You can do your cute little songs and dance around like your usher. Um, you'll get there, man. You're only 19. You don't get respect at 19 when you're doing bubblegum pop songs. You earn respect. He is a little kid. I am cutting him some slack, but he doesn't think he's a little kid. He thinks he's freaking John Lennon or something. And it's like, no, you're not Michael Jackson, dude. Dancing in his pants. Yeah, he's got hammer pants on now, which I think is funny. It's like, you can poop in there, keep your lunch in there, whatever you want. He's got hammer pants. Yeah, he ain't Michael Jackson. I don't get it. I mean, you know. That's a different level. Michael Jackson did one thing that Biebs doesn't do. Can you guess it? Well, he did several things that Biebs doesn't do. But what's the most important thing that Michael Jackson did that Bieber doesn't do? Write songs. Oh, yeah, I did tons of stupid stuff. But I didn't walk around acting like I was king shit either. Fondle children, yeah, probably that too. Write music. He doesn't write songs. He's a puppet. He's a good puppet. Don't get me wrong. He's a puppet. Bass face Josh, I think sums it up clearly here by saying, I'd rather be molested by Michael Jackson than Bieber on any day. You know what? Michael Jackson was always humble. Oh, thank you. That's so nice of you. And he always gave back to his fans. Even though he was crazy as a freaking loon, Michael Jackson was never ungrateful. Michael Jackson would have never stood up at an award show and bitched at the crowd like that. If Michael Jackson would have gotten booed, he would have thought, whoa, what am I doing wrong? Maybe I should fix this. What does Bieber do? Hey, fuck you guys. I'm a kid. I'm just trying. I'm trying really hard. And you're not being nice to me. Yeah, okay, Biebs. That's called modesty, dude. You got to get used to it. Check it out. You got to try it sometime. It's very cool. Show me on the doll where Bieber touched you. <laughs> oh. That's great. I love it that we got some warped people here today. Thank you guys for your vulgarity and your sickness. All right, Spinal Tap says, funny, but we need to balance the Bieber subject with a story about cool musicians. All right, good. I don't have to make it up because I got a call Thursday from Earl Slick who said, hey, man, I'm in town producing a record. Let's hook up. 
a Friday afternoon. I got Friday afternoon open. Let's go and you, me, and my manager, and we'll hang out. I thought, wow, Earl Slick called me to, to say, let's hang out. I love Earl, by the way. Earl looks like he's a devil biker guy. He's the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest guy in the world. And um, so i like, well, Earl, uh, I got an appointment. Uh, Friday afternoon, I'm in Santa Monica at True Tone. I can't get out of it. It's a dealer, you know, like I have to go. He goes, perfect, I'm recording at Village Recorders in Santa Monica. I'll just meet you over there. So Earl came over. This is how down to earth this guy is. Earl shows up over at True Tone. Hey, bud, what's up? Walks right in. What do we do? We don't start jamming electric guitar, telling stories or name dropping or anything like that. We're in there looking at the, we're just chatting. How you been? Catching up. He's asking about Peter. Um, you know, what are you in town doing? All that sort of stuff. Normal chit chat. He spots this old vintage Gibson 12 string on the wall, grabs it, starts playing like really good stuff on it. And then he hands it to me, goes, here, check it out. This is awesome. And then he grabs like this little parlor guitar that was there. And we sat down and played Delta Blues, like in the middle of True Tone on the sofa. And so there I am with Earl Slick, and I'm going, ding, 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 ding. We're playing like Robert Johnson stuff. I'm playing a 12 string, and he's playing this little parlor guitar and just killing it. It's Earl Slick, you know, like he's just got that groove. He's got that thing. And he's looking at me like, is this good? Huh? What do you think? What do you think? You know, like he's just such a guy, just a normal guy. We're just jamming. And at first you're like, Holy shit, I'm jamming with Earl Slick. This is kind of weird. And he's looking at you like, come on, dude, let's jam. You know, it's just like hanging out with my buddies. And we sit down and, and play, uh, sit down and play guitar. Like, hey, let's play some Delta Blues. Okay, let's play some Delta Blues. And so I hung out with Earl. He had to be over at Village at 4 so we hung out at True Tone till like two minutes till four. We were there a few hours. And just play guitar. Hey, look at this old guitar. Look at that old guitar. Got any fun old amps here? And, you know, blah, 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 blah. It was great. So that's the opposite of Bieber. Right? This is Earl Slick. If you guys don't know Earl Slick, look him up. This guy. Uh... All of the second phase of Bowie stuff was Earl. Most of John Lennon's solo records. You know, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Like, he's played with two of my idols, you know, David Bowie and John Lennon. Not in that order. It'd actually be John Lennon and David Bowie. But, um, and he's an integral part of their sound. And he's just the coolest, mellowest guy doesn't have an arrogant bone in his body. First thing out of his mouth is, how are you? He really means it. So there you go. Does that, does that, uh, does that balance the Bieber subject? Good enough? There's a picture on my Facebook page. Most of you probably saw it, but uh, his manager took a good picture of Earl and I. We had just got through jamming, and we both have these little childish grins on our face. From being um, <laughs> David Hayes, that's funny. Um, you can see the grin on her face that we just got through playing, and we're all kind of nerded out. Um, David Hayes says, "I would rather watch a monkey try to play a banjo than watch Bieber." I'll tell you, man, watching a monkey try to play a banjo, I think, would be pretty freaking entertaining. <laughs> Christopher Potts. Oh, here we go. I'd rather watch a monkey screw a football than. <laughs> I would rather watch a monkey fill in the blank than watch Bieber. All right, go. Let's see what you guys got. I would rather watch a monkey. I have a good one that's very vulgar, if you want it. And I don't even like sports. <laughs> yeah. I still like show me on the doll where Beaver touched you. <laughs> oh, Justin. I'd rather watch a monkey play a solid state amp. Yeah, fair enough. That's funny. That's really funny. 
A monkey can have sex with the banjo. Yeah. <laughs> I've got too many dirty scenarios running through my head. I'm making myself laugh now. <laughs> I can't say this is being recorded. I can't say these things. <laughs> My children have the internet. I'd rather watch Davy Jones. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, Bieber's trying to be Davy Jones, isn't he? That's <laughs> Okay. So my favorite question that I got asked in the pre-show, because he's a monkey, get it? Davy Jones could play the banjo, though. Wake up, sleepy Jean. Bat, boom, bat. Oh, what can it be? Type them out? No, it's too... There's just a really funny joke that I heard when I was a kid about three guys of a certain ethnic background and a monkey. Um, how can I put it politically correctly? Okay, I can do it. I'll put it in the music business context. All right, so bad joke, and then we'll get on to real stuff. Okay. So there's a smart drummer, a mean drummer, and a dumb drummer. And they live out in the country and they're having a hard time making a living. So the smart drummer says, hey, you know what we're going to do? So we're going to fatten up a pig and enter it in the state fair. And we'll get like, you get like $5,000 for the biggest pig. It's great. Okay. So they go out and buy a pig. Pig's not putting on any weight at all. Mean Pollock says, oh, God, I said it. I have to edit this. The mean drummer says, See, this is where I grew up. I apologize. That's horrible. The mean drummer says, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to uh, we'll stick a cork in his butt, and he'll get huge. <laughs> and he does. He gets giant, and they take it to the state fair, and it wins. So the smart drummer says, I'm not pulling the cork out when we're done. I'm just letting you guys know. And the mean drummer and the dumb drummer both say, yeah, me either. I'm not going to do that. That's incredible. So there's a monkey there. This is where the monkey comes in. There's a monkey there, and the organ grinder has a monkey. And they go and they pay the organ grinder to use his monkey for a minute, and the, the monkey reaches out for the cork, and the, the dumb drummer is standing right behind the monkey. And the mean drummer and the smart drummer are standing further back. And um, the monkey pulls the cork out, and he's just completely covered in pig crap. You know, instantly, just like, bleh, he's overwhelmed. And the other two run away, and it's fine. And they, they come back later, a couple, minute, a couple minute later. Rock and Roll Willie's walking away. This is great. They come back a minute later, and the dumb drummer's laying in all the poop, and he's laughing his ass off, and he's hysterical. And they're like, hey, you idiot. What are you laughing at? You're completely covered in crap. He says, yeah, but... <coughs> You should have seen that monkey try to put the cork back in. <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking of Bieber pulling the cork out. Wouldn't that be... <laughs> Did I just lose half my audience there? Oh, my God. <laughs> Bieber and the monkey and the banjo. Anyway. Okay. I can see that was a flop. Bieber is the court, Troy says. Hey, no, no, I didn't say that word, David. That was a different word that I use for drummers. Um, so, yeah, Bieber is the court. That's a way to tell the joke. So they walk over to Usher and they go, hey, can we borrow Bieber for a minute? <laughs> and they stuck Bieber in the cow's butt, or the pig's butt. Oh, that would be good. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I'm going to get a call from Bieber's lawyers, aren't I? Remember how Zeppelin got on me for playing that song, Zeppelin's label? Yeah, it's a very old joke. I think I literally heard that joke 40 years ago, and it was old then. Yeah, there's a smart Bieber and a dumb Bieber and a mean Bieber. And if we put Bieber in the Bieber's butt, it'll get huge. Can we borrow Bieber? <laughs> this whole show is Bieber. It's 12.35 already. We've just wasted it on Bieber. Your dad used to tell that joke. Yeah, I, I think I heard it from one of my uncles who probably heard it in the 30s or something. Um, can we have two plugs for Bieber? Why don't they stick? Yeah. Well, we can really go down the Bieber insult route here. I need to come up, somebody Google Bieber jokes and see what you come up with. I'm sure there's entire websites about it. You're two years older than me, so it's old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not so worried about plugging up Bieber's butt as, as his mouth. Okay. So let's talk about 65 amp stuff here really quick. As much as I love telling jokes, and you guys are good at it, I'm not. But thank you for listening on Where Lola Played. I'm a drummer. Yeah, me too. I'm part drummer. I got to be careful how I say that. Uh, I have some drummer in my heritage, if you know what I mean. So uh, someone asked, the Ventura is American, but it uses a British topology. Can you explain that to me? Um, Rob Clute's embarrassed that he's Canadian. You know, but he's not Canadian anymore, Rob. He moved here. So you're off the hook. These guys still have Rush. They still live in Canada. Sarah McLaughlin still lives in Canada. Right? So, the cream of your crop stays there. We get the dipshits. Not all of them. There's a lot of great Canadian artists here, but the good ones usually stay in Canada. So, uh, anyway, the Ventura is an American-voiced amp, but it does have a little bit of a British topology, but not, um, not so much as you would think. Um, the the only thing that's British about the Ventura is that EF86 tube, you know, which is a European tube. Uh, it's a eight pin pentode preamp tube instead of a dual triode. Uh, Pete Thorne's great. What are you talking about? Oh, Christopher, I'll tell the joke in a second. Um, so I started out just doing the color channel off the London with that amp, which is basically 75% of that is Vox AC15 kind of circuit. Only we changed it and enhanced it. Um, and I just ran it into a pair of 6V6s, which are very, very American sounding tubes. They're probably the most American sounding tube. Um, but there wasn't enough distortion, so we added a 12AT7 after that for gain with a cathode follower, which is, that's kind of European and American, you know, two gain stages and a cathode follower. Um, Rock and Roll Willie says, is the related Ventura, uh, is the Brit side more Voxy, Marshley, or neither? Eh... It's definitely not Marshally. Um, I would say more Vox, more Selmer kind of thing. It doesn't have EL84s or EL34s, so there's only a certain amount of British you're going to get out of it, you know. Okay, now I'm intrigued. What does a Christmas tree and Justin Bieber have in common? Their balls are just for decoration. Oh, my God. Oh, good comments. What was your first amp build? Uh, the very first amp I built from scratch was a Marshall 18 watt. 
kind of before that whole Marshall 18 watt thing happened. Maybe I was one of the guys that started the little groundswell, but yeah, I built a Marshall 18 watt. That was my first from scratch, all parts. I've taken a bunch of amps and reworked them pretty heavily, but um, Gibson Guitar says, my Ventura sounds very close to my 55 Tweed Deluxe. Yeah, it should. And so that and my other old amps can stay at home. Yay, that's the purpose. Uh, excellent. Stratocaster Mojo says, hey, Dan, got a chance to play my Epiphone Casino through my buddy's little Elvis. Awesome. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, Casino is a cool guitar. Those P90s sound great through little Elvis. Uh, Blaine B says, I have a little Elvis for my Brit sounds, and I want a Ventura for the American sounds. Yeah, that's a good way to go. Uh, the Empire is very, very British. 18 watt first build based on the Balls model, correct? No, I, it's, the Balls is an 18 watt clone. Um, so is mine. I just knew that guy, um, Danny. So, kind of inspired me. I played one, I liked it. Same time Peter was going through hell with Cheryl about volume. So, the first amp was that, and then we added the AC15 stuff on the other side, and that became the London. How old were you when you did it, and what made you get into amp building? Oh, my gosh. Well, I've been into amps forever, you know, but I never really built one from a pile of parts uh, until about 2001. So I would have been 35, 36 at that point. Um, I would taken amps completely apart and rebuilt them many times. And I would, I'd taken many amps and just gutted them except for the power section and rebuilt a completely different preamp into it. But I never just said, I need to buy this size screw and this washer and get a chassis and drill holes in it, you know, do all that stuff. But I mean, I took my first Marshall apart when I was 12 or 13. Yeah, 13. Took it completely apart. I mean, transformers were still mounted, but Tube sockets and switches were still there, but I took the entire amp apart. That was in 1978. What made me get into amp building? Just curiosity. I love to figure out how these things work. Uh, I'm not a good tech. Like, I'm not your... I did get my first shock at 12. That's right. Um, I'm not a fantastic troubleshooter tech guy. I'm good at it, but not great. Um... My solution to fixing amps was like, fuck it, let's just tear it apart and rebuild it. <laughs> because I wanted an excuse to rebuild the amp from scratch. I, I think that's really fun. Um, and I had a lot of free time. And I got a lot of experience working on amps when I was on the road playing. Um, you know, I had old amps. I never could afford brand new amps. So I always had old amps and they blew up a lot. And so I learned how to fix them and through the course of that, make them a little stronger, you know, like better grid resistors, you know, better filter caps, you know, all these little things you can do that really. Yeah, David Hayes. Yeah, I mean, before amplifiers, I was taking everything apart. I took radios apart, uh, all my toys. You know, anything, my record player, I take it apart. How does that thing turn? How does a motor and a belt turn the turntable? And how does a cartridge work? And I always thought it was cool. Uh, Stratocaster Mojo asks, what is the biggest or most common failure you would see in old amps blowing up? It depends on the amp. I mean, fenders have weaknesses and marshals have weaknesses. Um, Addictive, yeah, it's really addictive. Um, you know, marshals tend to blow grid resistors. When the tubes fail, they blow grid resistors because they use those white concrete resistors on the grids, which are, um, hey, is that JD Simos here? Hey, JD, good to see you. Um, I was always popping tubes. The grid resistor would roast and the fuse wouldn't blow in time and it would send catastrophic damage down the rest of the amp. 
So if that grid resistor hadn't gone open, it wouldn't have done that. Good to see you, JD. Love to show you all of our new stuff sometime. If you guys don't know, JD Simo's out of Nashville. He's a fantastic country and blues player. Got the pleasure of listening to him play in Nashville a couple times in person. And he's a super sweet guy. Um, you know, tubes always fail, but you expect that. Tubes are going to fail. Hi, Mickey kid. Um, you know, fenders, uh, for some reason, the caps and fenders seem to go. Oh, I love back at you, JD. I mean it sincerely. You're a great player. Really, really good. And very enjoyable. If you guys don't know JD, look him up. Download some songs. He's fantastic. He's the real thing. There's not many of those guys around. He's not like one of these Nashville robots. He actually plays with expression and heart. And it's really good. It's really, really good. Um, you know, David Hayes can probably tell you more about fenders blowing up than I can. My experience with fenders were that the caps they used didn't seem to want to last very long. Lots of DC leaking all over the board. Uh, blown filter caps. I never blew a filter cap out of a Marshall, but I blew them out of fenders. And, uh, and you learned it all from Bieber, right on. I knew there was something about you, JD, damn it. Um, um, yeah, JD, we should talk. I got so many new things now since the last time I saw you. I'd love to share them with you. I can give you my number. You can private message me here on here as well. But, um, David, what do you see in fenders more than anything else? I, my experience, you know, Vox's. Uh, lots of broken wires in boxes. Lots of dirty, dirty tube sockets uh, that arc in boxes. Uh, also with fenders, I filter caps and grid resistors, yeah. Yeah, fenders tend to do that too. Uh, when they pop power tube, the grid resistor will go, um, which means they're not using a good enough grid resistor. That's why we use these silicone coated wire wound things. Um, that are flame proof so they don't fail. I'm only aware of one grid resistor on any of our amps that's ever failed. And I just heard about it yesterday. And it's because the amp was modified. But, um, is this with vintage amps or contemporary or both? I'm, I'm sorry, Christopher, I'm not clear on the question. I'm talking about grid resistors going and filter caps? Failing, yeah, it's vintage or new amps. Most people still use those little white concrete um, grid resistors because they're cheap. Uh, they also drift a lot. You know, they get hot and they drift, and that'll cause them to fail and cause the tube to fail as well. Yeah, Princeton's. Yeah, I mean, we use kind of overrated flame-proof silicone-coated wire-wound ones. And um, so far, I have no failures. I mean, the one amp that it did fail on, I just heard about yesterday, that it had been modified. Still shouldn't have failed, but it did. Um, you know, I uh, no, I use 8-watt. Big mofos. Six and a half watt if I can't get the eight watts. Um, you don't want it to fail. If it fails, then it's just open current going through the amp. It's very dangerous. And it costs like an extra 20 cents. It's one of those things like, why doesn't everybody do this? So... We also put an extra level of fusing in between the power section and the rest of the amp. So if the power section goes, it's not going to roast. Like my favorite 50 watt Marshall that happened, ruined, you ruined the output transformer twice on it before I figured that out. 
David Haynes, I use a two watt metal oxide flame proof on the grid on fender amps. Yeah, good for you, Dave. That's why Dave's one of the best fender guys in the world. He knows how to, he knows how to take care of them. Javier says, adding a choke to a modern Marshall amp make any difference like a DSL 50? Hi, Lodvar. Um, well, they all have chokes in them now, Javier, uh, except for the little bitty ones. Um, adding a better choke can definitely help. If you put a uh, mercury magnetics choke in there, you'll notice a big difference. That's one of the cheapest upgrades you can do to any amp is put a mercury choke in it. And they're like 25 bucks. Oh, nice. Guitar Dom says, Dan, I took your advice and got the Mercury Magnetics power cord from my older Elvis. I did notice the amp's response and tone was improved, and it was quieter. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Yeah, that Mercury Magnetics cord is really good. It does make a difference. Uh, choke a Princeton. Yeah, you can put a little bitty choke on a Princeton. It's really good. Uh... Jerry Guitar says, repeat purchases is why your amps are designed to last. Yeah, I just kind of learned from all my mistakes. Uh, thank you for acknowledging that. Uh, that's our goal. Uh, Peter and I together. Uh, Blaine, where can you get the Mercury Magnetics cord? Go to uh, Mercury Magnetics website, mercurymagnetics.com. I can post it if you want. It's, a, it's also a really cheap upgrade for any amp. It's, uh, it's incredible. It, makes, it does make a difference. The amp will get quieter. Uh, you'll notice a, a nice difference in uh, performance. Let me put this up for you, unless someone's already done it. I have to allow links here. Hold on a second. Um, Did that come through? Um, so there was a question. Do I need to use a power conditioner with my amps at home or is surge protection sufficient? House is 20 years old, good wiring. I tell you, I wouldn't use surge protection unless you have to. Uh, most surge protectors really slow down the electricity coming into your amp. You'll hear it. Um, most surge protectors when you ask for a sudden current draw like that, they really dumb it down. Um, power conditioning is the best way to go. Um, uh, but if you look at studies about power conditioners, they really slow down the electricity. Uh, a Furman conditioner works great. Now that's gonna, and that has surge protection built into it, but not like those little shitty ones you buy at like Best Buy or something. Those little things that are on a power strip, don't plug your amp into those. That thing's choking off the juice out of your amp. Um, makes a difference, trust me, try it. Plug it straight into the wall and then plug it into that surge protector and see, you'll hear the difference. It's subtle, but you'll hear it. And it'll feel like, oh, you know, like you're, you gotta dig through it a little harder. Um, this mercury power cord really helps if you have a power conditioner if your house is 20 years old good wiring I wouldn't worry about it um, if you get a big surge in your amp it's just going to pop a fuse uh, you know you a huge giant surge but uh, all it's going to do is hit your power transformer it's not going to hit the rest of the amp and if you have a if you have a good power transformer, it's not made out of old soup cans from China, um, then uh, it won't make a difference. It's okay. All right, rock the verb. You got that too. Recommended conditioner. I always go with firm and stuff. I've got one here. What model is this? I have the uh, PL Pro from Furman on my rack over here. And it works really well. 
Uh, well, it depends on how much money you want to spend, Rock and Roll Willie. Rock and Roll Willie asks, um, by conditioner, do you mean filtered or regulated? Uh, most conditioners are just filters. It keeps it quiet and consistent. Uh, a regulator will actually deliver whatever voltage you dial in. Um, if you can afford a regulator that has a lot of current, um, then it, that's the way to go. They cost a lot more money than just a power conditioner, though. A regulated power supply will cost you, a good one will cost you five, six hundred dollars. Um, it's worth it, you know, if you're running hi fi gear and your studio equipment. Steve Kirk here says, I run a firm and balanced power unit in my studio. And um, it does make a difference. It's not going to make a crappy amp sound good, um, but it will make a good amp work the best it can. And you can tell the difference. The problem with most houses is, you know, when your refrigerator kicks on, your voltage drops three or four volts, or your air conditioning kicks on, your voltage will drop down a few volts. And every one volt and change... Uh, hey, Chell, how are you? Welcome, welcome. What's going on in Sweden, by the way, Chell? You need to get us up to date on that. Lots of riots going on over there. But every drop of one volt to your amp is about four volts to your tubes. That's what your transformer is doing. It's transforming your wall voltage into the voltage that the rest of the amplifier needs. So, you know, here in the U.S., if you're getting 120 volts out of the wall, and we're converting that to 480, then there's a four volt swing. So, if your voltage drops from 120 down to 114 because your air conditioner came came on. That's 24 volt swing on your tubes. That sounds different. It feels different. 24 volts is a big gap. Um, so having regulated clean power, clean power is very important as well. Uh, JD brings up a good thing. I, I haven't toured with Variax. I have toured with Variax for the last year along with voltage regulators to save my tubes and have consistency. Makes life easier. Yeah, it makes a big difference. You want to have 120 volts coming out clean. Uh, you know, the electricity, the AC, is what your amp breathes. That's its fuel. Uh, so you wouldn't put bad gasoline into your Ferrari. And that's what you do if you've got inconsistent, dirty power. And most AC is amazingly dirty. Uh, there's a couple of boxes you can buy to actually listen to it. But if you just stick a meter on there, you can see it. It's filthy. All those artifacts come in to your amp and your filter caps have to try to get that out. Um, if there's a lot of it, it won't be able to do it. You just can't filter an amp that hard and still have it playable. You have to walk that line. So Ustreamer599 says, think you are a very down to earth guy. Need more like you in the business. Oh, thanks. I just do what I do. I just do what I do. Nothing incredible. But the only thing I like to do is not pretend that what I do is magic. There's a lot of guys in our business that love to tell you that um, what they do is somehow magical and amazing. And um, Sorry, my phone's going crazy. And it's a big, big secret that only I know. Um, that's bullshit. That is just serious bullshit. Those are guys trying to uh, protect their little jobs. And that's fine. But you don't get anywhere like that. Um, what brand of filter caps do I use? I have them made by a company in Virginia. They're the same company that make the Sprigs. So those are my coupling caps. We have them made. And then they're, they come through Marty here at ARS in Van Nuys. Yeah, filter caps are electrolytics. Um, and I use, they're just, they're nothing special. Just if I buy them in large amounts, I get really good caps at a better price. But I buy them through Marty here at ARS. But they're built to our spec. They're really low ESR caps, which means they charge and recharge faster. And they have less internal resistance because they're well made.
That's right. There's no magic. We're dealing with World War II technology here. And all these people, I've invented something. No, you haven't. <laughs> if you think you've invented something in guitar amps, you haven't really been around much. You're not very. You're not exposed. Um, it's it's not inventing at all. I make the analogy to cooking. You know, Wolfgang Puck uses chicken and noodles and makes some sauce on it. And it sounds way, it tastes way better than what you buy at Marine Calendars. But it's the same ingredients. It's the cook. You like the way that guy cooks. Ah, you streamer 603 says, you're the man, Leo, thanks. I just don't lie to myself. I'm not going to lie to you about it. It's just fun. It's a hell of a lot of fun. I have my own perspective on how to do things. There's 10 other ways to do it right, not just mine. That's another thing that drives me nuts in this business. Um, uh, people tell you theirs is the only way to do things. That's just so stupid. It says, yes, I worked for Tony, I'll leave the last name off, for three years, and that dude is whacked beyond words. Yeah, I had some interesting experiences with him, too. Yeah. I think these guys think that's the way they're marketing themselves, is I'm some sort of wizard. I understand something that no one else understands. Even though they used to use tube technology at NASA, I understand something that they don't so but um, you saw a dumble for sale for 100k did anybody buy it look I made poop yeah Chell uh, not to jump around here on subjects but I've been seeing all these riots and that's um I'm very sorry to hear that. Sweden's such a beautiful place with such nice people. Um, seems like all your immigrants feel like they're left out of the prosperity or something. Or do they just want free prosperity? Did they move there to think that their life would be easy if they moved to Sweden and they wouldn't have to work? So, um, anyway, yeah, I just do what I do. I'm just a cook. Um, if you like the dish that I make, I'm very flattered and honored. But there's 10 other guys I know. David Hayes is one of them. He makes amps. They're great. We make amps very differently. What he does is right and good and valid and the whole thing. He's a master. I think he's one of the best Fender guys in the United States. Um, I just happen to not be a Fender guy. That's just I do something different. Mine's really eclectic. I've taken what I consider to be the best practices out of a few different amp companies. <clears throat> and um, put it together into one thing. 1,452 amp builders in Nashville, and everyone can do it better than me. Yeah, so they say. Props for David, that's right. What are riots in Canada? Lots of people standing in one place with the same color t-shirts. Huh. I was going to say I've never seen a riot in Canada. You guys have riots in Canada? You seem Canadians are just too polite. But anyway, um, I hope things calm down in Sweden, Chell. I do want to come to Scandinavia. It looks like August now. Lodvar, you asked that question. Uh, where are you, Lodvar? I can't remember. Are you in Norway? I think I'm going to go to Oslo in August. Christopher Bott, we wrecked downtown Vancouver for hockey and then cleaned it up the next morning. That's very Canadian. We love our Canadian brothers.
And then we went and cleaned it up. No, Canucks are not that, you streamer 603. Oh, you're in Oslo. Okay, well, perfect. Yeah, I'm going to go hang out with Arna in Oslo. Looks like August. I'm going to hit London and then Oslo. Anybody on from England here? We have. I know there's a few, Mickey Kid and a few others, a few British guys. Have you guys gone over to Essex yet and checked out Peach Guitar too? He's selling amps like crazy. He's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah? No? Oh, hey, JD, I got your message. Cool. Wow, what a nice message, JD. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'll give you a call and say hello. Thanks, man. I'm glad to see you doing well. Seriously, guys, check out JD Simo stuff. Cheers, JD. Thanks for all the kind words, man. Yeah, I just got your message. It's great. Um, ladies and gentlemen, JD Simo. Check out his band, Simo. Um, this guy can really play. He's amazing. Very enjoyable. And he's humble, cool, sweet guy. He's not some a-hole. John Mayer. Um, when you go to Oslo, check out Adam Douglas if you get a chance. Okay. Tony Connolly's here. Hey, Tony. How are you, man? Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Connolly from Rock Guitar Daily. Wearing the red trunks, weighing in at 172 pounds. You streamer, just ordered a little Elvis on Friday from CME. Ah, I got that order, and we're rushing it. You'll get it next week. Or we'll ship it next week. Thank you for that order. Yeah, uh, they got a hold of me yesterday and said it was for one of their really good customers, so... Uh, yeah, we've got one for you. We're going to ship it out next week. Jack Allen. All right, cool. That's as soon as we can do it. You just kind of got lucky because we had made some in a batch that I could steal from another order. Crowd noise and applause. Yay. Chicago Music Exchange is doing great for us, too. Well, thank you, Jack. I appreciate the order. Sincerely. And feel free to call me if you have any questions or anything. We can talk. We can talk. We can talk if you want to. Oh, that's a different song. Sorry. Good enough. Much faster than I would have thought. You're very welcome. We do it when we can. I can't guarantee it all the time. I mean, getting a one-week turnaround is pretty crazy. Yeah, Chicago Music Exchange is a great place. You guys saw that video they did on the producer, right? That was really cool. Really, really cool. But, well, we didn't get to a lot of these topics. Uh, talked about Earl. We talked about the Ventura. How to blow up amps. I would like to address that. Um, a lot of guys are worried that if they put too much boost in the front of their amp, it's going to blow the amp up. That should not happen if your amp's made reasonably well at all. Ah, you got the 212 with the Alnico Blue. Excellent. Take care, David. Good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. You got the 212. That's a good combination with that Elvis. You'll like it a lot. Very nice. Uh, anyway, you're not going to blow up your amp by putting a booster in front of it. You might stress out the V1 tube a little bit. Uh, depending on how it's made what kind of tubes in there and all this stuff but it shouldn't um, it shouldn't have any problem at all Chell asks will the little Elvis cope in a live situation if it's not mic'd um, yeah I should I use it in my band outdoors with no mic and it's fine 
Depends on what you're doing, though. How loud's your drummer? How loud's your band? You know. Um, I play with a loud drummer, and I'm fine. Our band's not super loud, though, on stage. Rob Clute says, will the Soho ever go back to the blue line or stay red line? You know, if I get enough requests for it, um, we'll do it in the blue line. I just wasn't selling that many. thought we'd move it to the red line because a lot of guys told me they wanted to buy a Soho, but they couldn't afford it. I use a Elvis 112 combo with my band, and it's fine, but I have ran it with the 212, and it sounds big. It's fine. I mean, it's an EL84 amp, so there's not a lot of clean headroom there. No matter what you do to a pair of EL84s, you're not going to get clean headroom. Oh, you called True Tone. All right. Cool. Yeah, I got a call. Did you talk to Paul over there? Who'd you talk to, Nick? Well, it does 12 watts clean. Uh, full boat, it's 16, 17 watts when you're in distortion. Blue Line London, that'll be next year. Oh, you talked to Chris. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll call over there because they need to be keeping that in stock. It's kind of silly. But they do keep them in. They do get them in. They just sell right away. So. But, anyway. Very good. Love my Soho. Looks like I bought it at the right time. Well, I mean, we can make it if you want a special order one. I just got to... You know, it's, I can't make a model and stock parts for something we don't sell enough of. I just can't afford it. It's not that I don't want to, or it's not that I don't think it's not worthwhile. It's just literally economics. It's funny, too, because the Soho is the one that most of our artists really love, and they just don't do that great in stores. I love my Soho. I, my high-powered Soho is my go-to amp for bigger gigs. I love it. The Soho has good clean headroom for a pair of EL84s. The clean sound on the Soho is amazing. It's really good. But if you've got the amp up over four or five, it's not going to be clean. That's all EL84 amps are like that. There's no way around it. I could drop the gain down to nothing. You turn it up to 10, and it'll be clean, but it won't be any louder than if it's on four the way we have it. Um... A lot of people tend to get wrapped around the number on the dial and don't realize that that's a shell game. They're like, mine stays clean up to six. Well, yeah, because it has lower gain on the tubes. If you put a SPL meter, in, a dB meter, in front of your amp, you'll realize that six on one amp is the same volume as four on another, is two on this one, is eight on that one. It's just... Uh, just how much you gain up the amp. What is the Soho's inspiration from? Nothing. That's the first one we just kind of pulled out of our rear end. There's no commonality with that circuit or anything else. Um, the Soho is gainier than the Monterey because of the... Um, EL84s, they just break up really fast, whereas 6v6s don't. Thanks, Carp. The Royal Albert's fine. Again, we just didn't sell that many of them, so we might bring that back into the red line. Actually, a lot of our old amps we might bring into the red line. So, uh, Kirk, yeah, I just, I love the EF86. I love the Vox type topology. Uh, there's no amps that I know of that had an EF86 feeding a 12X7 feeding a cathode follower before the Soho. There's two or three boutique guys doing that now, which I think is flattery. Um, but before that amp, I wasn't aware of that ever happening. And with that bump, you know, that's kind of the unique combination. Again, we didn't invent anything. I think 10 smart guys would have come up with the same recipe messing around. And just we were kind of the first ones to get traction. It was probably someone else that did it, but I wasn't aware of it. I think any amp guy sitting around in a room could come up with that idea. Definitely. 
Well, it's 115. What do you guys think? No, the top boost uh, AC30 doesn't have an EF86 in it. All right, that's 12x7 gain stage, gain stage uh, cathode follower. Uh, and our tone stack's in a different place than it is on the Vox. That's okay. You don't know every amp. That's all right. Uh, is the 12x7 only been used when the bump is on? No, no. What the bump does is it just bypasses the tone stack. So, you know, a tone stack is a limiting device. You know, like a bass knob doesn't create bass. It allows bass that's already there. When you got the bass knob turned down, a lot of that is just being shunt to ground. When you turn it, less is being shunt to ground. Um, but it's, it's a big, huge limiting circuit. So we just go around it, and there's no limit. And you get this big, wide open guitar signal that sounds great. But that only works if you're using good components and your circuit's good. If you're using poo poo components and your circuit's not very well made, when you do that, it's going to sound like shit. So it puts a lot of pressure on you. Um, it puts a lot of pressure on you to uh, get it right. You can't do the bump if there's anything lacking in your amp. So it's very revealing. Very, very revealing. Yeah, bump and the boost, huge Soho sound, yeah. Well, thank you, Nick. You have a good day too, buddy. Do any of the non-bump tone controls work when the bump is gauged? No, not really. Uh, it's very, very, very subtle. The treble and bass, that won't do anything. Now, when you have a Soho on your Soho or the Monterey or the Stone Pony, you know, it's a six position bump control there. So when you barely have a little bump on, they still work. The higher you go on the scale, the less they work. That adjustable bump um, tells you uh, how much you're bypassing the circuit. Where's the cathode follower? Right before the phase inverter. What is the phase inverter? Uh, we use what's called a half wave phase inverter in that amp. And the way this one goes, the tone stack is after the gain stages. It's in between the gain stages and the cathode follower. Monterey is the same price as the blue Soho, not the red Soho. We don't use the long tail pair phase inverter on the Soho. I use a half wave or concertina. It's like the phase inverter that's in a AC15 or a Marshall 18 watt or a deluxe. They have a similar kind of phase inverter. The um, all the deluxes use a half wave phase inverter, which is why they sound so good. That's why the deluxe is one of the most popular Fender amps because it has that unique phase inverter, which I love. <coughs> you get distortion out of that phase inverter. That's really, really good. <laughs> you saw my gig from the elementary school. Yeah, I sort of sing. I couldn't hear myself at all on that gig, but there was monitors didn't exist. Rock the Verb says, I like my Soho HP bump around four and those six V sixes. Your Soho doesn't have 6v6s in it, Rock the Verb. I, maybe that's a typo. You're welcome, Kirk. Uh, the Stone Pony gets pretty dirty. Uh, very much sort of like the faces. Oh, the 6v6s of a deluxe. That's right. Yeah, you're right. It's that, uh, that, uh, that phase inverter and that deluxe is what makes it sound so cool. Um, pretty dirty. It's not like modern metal dirty, but it gets dirty. Does the bump on the tupelo behave differently when the smooth switch is 
plus or minus. Yeah, the, the that switch on the Tupelo is really making those tubes act really differently. One way it's big and strong like this, and the other way it's just sort of ah. So it just kind of depends on what you want. It, it acts differently with 6v6s than it does on the EL84s. It kind of acts like a gain boost on the Tupelo almost. But what it's really doing is making the tube act perfectly. So it's like perfect tube, sloppy tube. Perfect tube, sloppy tube. So the net result is you'll get distortion, but it's also louder. So love my honesty. Oh, well, cool. Thanks. <laughs> it's my pleasure to be honest. I don't get thanked for my honesty very often. That's cool. Javier asked, does 65 have any dealers in Spain? We're actually working on a dealer in Spain, which I'll have posted. Uh, I think the best way for you to get one right now is through France. Um, likely, and we have a guy in Portugal, I think. But we're working on some dealers in Spain right now, and I don't know where that stands, to be honest. i got to figure that out. Um, write me an email, Javier, if you could just to dan at 65amps.com and I'll figure it out. Rock the Verb says, is there much headroom difference on the producer EL versus the producer 6L? No, it's pretty similar. Pretty similar. Both have a lot of good headroom, so. That works. All right, fellas, I'm going to make sort of a last call here. What do you think? Got to run, Dan. We'll leave you on this. What's worse than finding a Justin Bieber CD in your boyfriend's bedroom? Oh. Finding a box of tissues next to it. Oh. Rock and Roll Willie asks, how do the Tupelo and Ventura compare? Uh, can I save that for next week? They're similar, but not that much. The Tupelo's more modern sounding, I think, is the best way to put it. The Ventura is more... 50s through early 60s kind of sound. Uh, Tupelo is more blackface and forward sort of vibe. That's the simple answer. I can give you the long answer next week if that's okay. Is that cool? Thank you, Rob. I'm happy to answer all the questions. I think this is fun. It's like they're flying at me. I like it. Thanks again to our friends showing up. We still have a big crowd, notably Tony Conley. Thank you, Tony, for showing up. Uh, which Les Paul would you recommend? The one that makes you happy. Um, man, they can all be made good. Just get one that feels good and then change it till you're happy with it. Uh, guitar Dom. Thank you, Chell. I'll have this up on YouTube here shortly. Uh, J.D. Simo, thanks for dropping by. What a nice surprise. Seriously, if you guys don't know J.D. Simo, check him out. He's the real thing. What's the difference between Bieber and an onion? I think I know the answer to this, but you tell me. I can eat an onion? When you kill Bieber, no one cries? Is that it? No one cries when you cut up the Beeb. Ah. Well, I have hopes for Justin Bieber. I hope that he grows up and becomes a different person. I don't wish him any harm. Just, you know, J.D. Simo, S-I-M-O, J.D. Simo. Check him out. I hope Justin, you know, grows up and becomes a more grown-up person. He's got talent. He can sing. He can dance. He can play instruments really well, actually. Just got to get out of his head, man. Lodvar, thanks for coming by. Hopefully we'll see you in Oslo this summer. But I'll see you guys next week. Anyway, once again, it's May 29th. And uh, 2013, my name's Dan Bull, 
And it's been my pleasure to speak to you today from my office in Los Angeles, California at 65 Amps. And I will see you next week. In the meantime, feel free to get a hold of me on Facebook, Twitter, Spadinky Doink. I'm on Instagram, uh, all these things. Uh, FS75, Frank, you've been here. You didn't say hi. Hi, Frank, how are you? And, um, and we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.